friends. You can see that it's a beautiful sunny day, but like most of you, it's bitterly cold Most where most of you are at. We don't have the snow that a lot of you have, but it is cold. I've come in from doing chores, so got kind of the hat head, <laughs> flat fuzzy hair going on, but you don't care. I just wanted to pop on and do a little bit about spinning. I've gotten a lot of questions about that. I'm no expert. I have taught spinning lessons. I did learn to spin myself. I was a beginner at one point. And so all I can share with you are some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. And to say that probably none of these are new. You might have heard them somewhere else. You may hear them somewhere else. You may read them. But just, I thought, I'm going to think of five things that I would say are most helpful to me and that were most helpful when I was learning or most helpful when I've been teaching. And so there might be some pauses and breaks here because I'm going to try to show you the spinning wheel as I'm sitting here. So I have to stop and set up for different angles and such, but it's a beautiful day to sit here in my living room. I was going to try to sit by the fireplace, but it's really dark over at that end of the house and some strange lighting. And I thought you might like to see the sun coming in my windows. I might have mentioned before our living room, it's a long room. It used to be a living room and dining room that of course we don't use for dining anymore. But two of the walls are nothing but a huge bank of windows. One, The one behind me faces the west and two on the other side face the south. So in the summer they can be pretty hot, but in the winter time they're such a delight because they let in so much light and openness. I also apologize because it is so cold, the furnace is running a lot. So you're probably gonna hear that in the background, but we'll see how that sounds as we get going. So I'm going to pause here for just a second and try to get this set up for the spinning wheel. Like I said, I'm going to try to do five tips. And I'm probably gonna end with the most important one. But I'm going to start with the first one which is if you already have a wheel, if you've got a wheel or if you can borrow a wheel and you're going to learn to spin on it. This was the advice given to me and it's the one I give to students or I did when I was teaching spinning. And that is to just sit and treadle your wheel. If you already have one or if you can borrow one, sit while you're reading. If you watch TV, sit while you're watching TV or if you watch movies and just sit in the evenings and treadle your wheel with no yarn on it, no fiber, not doing anything with your hands, but just treadling and learn a rhythm and learn a speed. And it'll surprise you to know that the speed actually should be a little bit slower than what you're going to think, especially if you have a double treadle wheel. Now I'm gonna show you today with just my Louette spinning wheel, the one that you've seen before, and that's just a single treadle. Although I do prefer a double treadle, this is what I have to show you with. So I'm going to show you that. And actually this is, I'm, you're going to see the two main trip, first tips that I have. One is to just treadle, treadle, treadle until you can learn to smoothly operate your wheel. And then the next one is to learn to stop and start your wheel with those treadles, not with your hands, not leaning forward, if you possibly can. Learn to control your wheel with your treadle. Learn where to start it at the spot in your wheel where just with the flick of your foot, you can get it going again. So we'll see how well I can follow my own advice. Okay. Okay, so you can see my wheel. You're not going to actually see my feet, I guess, but you're gonna get the idea of what I mean. The wet wheel is um, a little bit of a heavy wheel for people if you've learned on something else, but um, you get used to it and you like it. And like I say, the single treadle is a little bit more difficult. The furnace has stopped, so I'm gonna to try to just talk to you from here. We'll see what we can get going. Sometimes when you're just starting, you don't grab it up here. Try to put your hand on the wheel somewhere like this and get it going in that clockwise motion, get it started. And you can see there's nothing on the bobbin except the leader. And if that's short enough, it won't get caught up in anything. But I think this is a good wheel to show you too because of the sheep. You can see them going round and round and you see the speed. And if it helps you do a little bit of a count. One, two, one, two, 
One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. If you get excited and you get going really fast, dun da dun dun da dun dun da dun. If you've got yarn or if you've got fiber on the wheel, it's going to shoot out of your hands. And this is the thing probably that most people do when they start is they want to go too fast. If you've got a double treadle, you try to go even faster. So slow it down. You have to be fast enough to have your fiber feed in. Some of that's controlled with the brake band, the tightening of that. But And you'll adjust that speed as you learn for different thicknesses of and types of yarn that you want to spin. But, so that's the main thing. Now here's where you're not going to be able to see my foot, I guess, but maybe you'll get the idea. I've kind of learned with my wheel, we'll see if I can do it, where I want to stop it to be able to get it going again without going backwards. See how that went counterclockwise for a little bit? Maybe I'll have to take some photos and insert to show you where my foot is at. But my heel is down and my toe is up. And just by then, maybe rocking it a little bit. And then I can push with my toe and get the wheel going again. Also on the Louette, uh, I have just a little, it's not maybe the most attractive thing, but I have a little wooden clothespin and that would be to catch my fiber if I had fiber on here. So, those are my first two tips. And you'd be surprised, the reason to, to learn to treadle, to practice treadling before you start spinning, is because as you know, you're using your hands and your feet and your brain when you get started spinning. And most people compare it to learning to ride a bike or, you know, patting your tummy and patting or rubbing your tummy and patting your head, that kind of thing. If you make this treadling and this stopping and starting second nature, if you learn to do it without having to think about what your hands are doing, then when you introduce fiber or yarn fiber to the wheel, you can concentrate on your hands. Your feet are going to know what to do with that wheel. Does that make sense to you? And I've had students roll their eyes. They want to just get started right away on the fiber and until they do this. And then I've had more and more of them come up and say, you know what, that really was a very valuable tip. So that's the first two. Got this set up um, so that the wheel itself shows the best for you. It seemed pretty good to have the table and the tablecloth behind it. We'll see. So we talked about practicing to treadle. We talked about stopping and starting with your feet. Now I'm not going to go into how you get started putting fiber on the wheel and treadling and all that. That's something that is, takes more than just a few second video. But uh, I will have inserted a picture, I think, right before this, of a bobbin, uh, this bobbin actually. And that's a tip, I learned this tip actually for working with Louette wheels because they are um, a, a bobbin lead wheel, Irish tension I think they call it. It's got quite a lot of pull. And so when you want to spin a finer yarn, a lighter yarn, um, and you don't want so much take up, so much pull on the wheel, if you were to start with a half full bobbin, half full of anything that you've already spun, you can even wrap it with foam, but why, when you can have some other spinning fiber on there, and then spin over the top of that. The half full bobbin, surprisingly, doesn't pull quite so much. There's probably technical reasons for this, but it's just something that I've learned. So that's another tip. If you need something that, uh, say, spinning Angora Bunny, um, a shorter fiber that you want a lot of loft in, Try spinning on a half full bobbin and see what you think, see what you find. So my other tip, important tip, and I didn't plan this out very well, I should have had some to show you, is when you fill your bobbin or you finish spinning whatever you're going to spin, even if it's just a little bit, before you ply it, before you wind it off onto your nitty knotty or wind it off to spin, if it's a singles that you're going to do, Practice patience and let that yarn rest. 
Now, when I learned to spin, and I don't know why, but the rule of thumb was to let it rest overnight. And, you know, if you're spinning a lot of bobbins full, you can do that. You know, you finish one, you go to the next, you finish one, you go to the next, and, they, and you have some that set. But that's my rule of thumb. I let every bobbin or every finished yarn sit and rest overnight. And then if I come back and ply it the next day, I let that plied yarn sit on the bobbin overnight. So that's my other tip. I'll give it a try and see if you notice a difference. Maybe it's all in my head, but it's how I learned and it's how I've always done it. I find if I ply right away or wind off right away as soon as I finish spinning, that that yarn hasn't had a time hasn't had time to relax, and I get a lot of kinks and twists. So give that a try. So let's see if we can get the wheel going again. And so my final and most important tip, the one that I start out with if I'm teaching a class, but I thought it was a good way to end this one. My number one tip for learning to spin, for you that want to learn to spin, is to learn to spin what you love. If you go to a class or if you take a class and the instructor tells you, let's say that you, because I've had students that do this, let's say that you raise alpaca. Let's say that you raise Angora rabbits, and that's the fiber that you want to spin. If you go and you have an instructor that tells you you can't learn to spin with that fiber, well, maybe sit through that class, but then find a different instructor. If you start learning to spin with what you have a passion for, with what you love, you're going to be a lot more motivated. And I've taught a number of students, a number of people to spin, with that fiber that they love, with the slippery alpaca, with the slippery angora. If you have a desire to learn that and you know that about anything that you might want to learn, if you have a passion for it and a desire for it, you're going to be much more motivated to learn and you're going to learn better. So for example, it's not what I had on the wheel, but what I'm sitting here spinning right now, what I'm talking to you about is Coradale because that's what I love. Now I will tell you, and so will many, many people that know way more than I ever will, if you go back in books, if you go back in videos or, or online lessons, if you read articles, you'll find that Coradale along with Romney are one of those fibers that are highly recommended for beginner spinners. There's a fairly long staple length, a decent amount of crimp, and it's a very forgiving fiber. So it is one that's very highly recommended. And I recommend it too, if you don't have something else you want to learn on. And sometimes when I'm frustrated with spinning something else, or if I'm just having a bad day all around, or if I just need some relaxation, Coradale is always my go-to fiber. It's always there quietly in the background waiting for me. And then I pick it up and start spinning it and realize why I love it. Now the furnace is coming on, you might hear that. But don't let anyone tell you that you can't spin something that you love. If you try it and you don't like it, then you can come back to it later. For example, this beautiful Angora rabbit fiber that my friend here in Michigan raises, Renee at Tailspin Farms. And I like to spin Angora. It is beautifully combed, but I love to spin good Angora because this is how I learned from a woman who raised Angora bunnies, just from a little fluff in my hand. And it has to be loosely held, you know, like that old saying, like a baby bird in your hand. And then, now I'm just putting it on top of the cordial here, but away we go with it. So you can learn to spin. If something doesn't work, try something else. And find an instructor that you like and who looks at things the same way that you do. And before long, you'll be spinning all you want. It may not be exactly what you want yarn-wise when you first start, but you'll get there. And you can use it for anything. Keep those beginning yarns and those samples and use them on something. So that's my Walking Towards 60 video for today, vlog for today. I've really been enjoying having you guys along with me on this cold and wintry January day where the sunlight is pouring in my window. I wish you all were actually here with me. 
to have a cup of coffee. I made some lavender and lemon cookies. And I think I'm going to go get one now. So happy spinning. Do you have any tips or anything that you may have learned that along the way that you'd like to share? I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's been helpful to you. Like I said, nothing new, probably just a different way to do them maybe or something you may not have thought about. So I hope it's helpful. Happy spinning, happy fibering, and stay warm.